Good morning and welcome to Tuesday, May 26th, 2020. Uh, this is a bit of a rough one, but uh, we'll get through it. It's titled, Hell is Loosed on Earth. And we'll be reading out of Revelation chapter 9, verses 6 and 11. And it reads, And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. We cannot fully imagine what the tribulation war is going to be like, and we do not want to think about such a time. I want to think about heaven, its perfect beauty, and its perfect king. But this is not the time. This is the time for warning of the future war with a hellish king, Apollyon, the destroyer. Please use your imagination to visualize this war by looking back at some of the previous wars our men and women have experienced firsthand. A World War II Army vet told me that while fighting the enemy in France, mortar shells fired by the enemy exploded in a cemetery as they were crossing it. He said the smell of of putrefying bodies unearthed by the explosions and the dying combatants blown apart lingered in his nostrils for months. Then there was the napalm bombs released during the Vietnam War to clear jungles which also set bamboo village huts on fire, burning the flesh of the inhabitants. There is no odor like that of burned flesh. Death has an odor. The writer has first-hand knowledge as an experienced nurse of the smell of death while standing at the bedside of a dying patient. Slowly, his breathing begins to change, and so does the smell of his breath. And then, sweat beads up on the body as it becomes cool and clammy. That, too, gives off, gives off an odor. One knows that death is near. Now imagine that you want to die because pain and suffering are so great, and there is no relief whatsoever, but you cannot die. That is what the tribulation wartime will be like, death so near, yet so far. And our final thought says, now do you understand why I prefer to write about heaven? You know, there will be saved people during the tribulation. Those that experience the tribulation will still have the opportunity for repentance and to seek Jesus Christ and they can be saved for those efforts but they're still going to have to endure the tribulation wouldn't it just be so much simpler to get saved now prior to the tribulation so when the rapture happens you are raptured out of here as part of God's family and then you get to avoid the tribulation yet for some unknown reason stubbornness ignorance stupidity People choose to live their life, reject Christ as their Lord and Savior, because they want to have pleasure in the present, and they don't even give the future a second thought. But this, the future is a, is a dismal place to be. It is not going to be fun for those who linger. Um, I don't have to worry about it personally, but I do worry about it, which is good to study the tribulation so we know what to warn people about. If we just tell people, hey, you really need to repent and trust in Jesus Christ. And they say, why? And you say, well, because God's wrath is coming. And they say, well, what is God's wrath? Well, if we didn't have the book of Revelation to tell us, we wouldn't know what to tell people. We'd just say, I don't know what's coming, but it's going to be bad. They'd be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And we really have no ammunition to fire back at because we wouldn't have the Word of God. But guess what? We do have the Word of God. We do have the book of Revelation that has revealed to us what's coming. So when we go out and warn people about why they need to get saved, and they say, well, why? You can tell them by the authority of the Word of God what's written in the book of Revelation is going to come to pass, and it is not going to be a fun place. It's not going to be a party place. So many people say, ah, I'd rather party in hell than go to heaven. Hell is not going to be a party. There's no celebrating. There's no fun. There's no music. There's no dancing. There's no... There's nothing positive about hell. Yet somehow people get this envision, this idea in their mind that, well, 
God doesn't like parties, so we're going to party in heaven. Uh Uh-uh. It's going to be eternal torment and torture. And we're going to get a preview of it here on earth during the tribulation. You know, the, the rich man and Lazarus, if you guys remember that story, the rich man was yelling across the great gulf fixed to to Lazarus and Abraham saying please if you could just dip your finger in water and touch my tongue but you can't transfer back and forth that was not possible that rich man was in torment he was not at a party he was not having fun he was not doing anything that any of us would want to do and he's going to endure that for all of eternity to this day that man the rich man that we read about and I'm not putting a dig on rich people. It has nothing to do with finances. Just that particular individual happened to be rich. But he decided to use his spoils for himself and enjoy his life on earth instead of paying attention to God and having things in the right priority. So something to think about. Hell is not a fun place. Hell is not a party town. It's not a good place to go. So something to think about. Get saved on this side of the tribulation, on this side of the rapture. And that could be this very day. We don't know when the rapture is coming. It could happen tonight. It could happen tomorrow morning. It could happen five minutes from now. You never know. So why procrastinate? Why miss the boat? Get saved. And live your life. Have fun. Trust me, being a Christian is a fun thing. It's not like, oh, I'm, I don't want to become a Christian because I'm going to have to give up my fun. No. Like I've said before, I've had a lot of fun with a lot of Christian pastors and ministers and and people of the church we're a fun group of folks albeit it's maybe a different type of fun but it's still fun and it's glorious it's rejoicing it's godly and it's righteous and it's fun so i encourage you if you're not already saved make that decision today to get saved it's not hard all you need to do is pray to god the father and say god i thank you for sending your son jesus to die for my sins accept jesus Invite Jesus into your heart and ask him to live with you within and to forgive you of your sins. And then you're set. That's all there is to it. It's really that simple. So if you've not made that prayer of repentance, do it today. Do it right now. Just turn to God and and pray to him and talk to him and thank him for what he did and accept the gift that he offered you. So I will leave you with that note. Thank you so much for joining me today. Remember, Hell is going to be loosed on earth for a short period. And then it's only going to get worse from there. So on that note, I will catch you all later. Thanks for watching. God bless each and every one of you, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks and bye-bye.